90s, soon as Judah rose up, all the other tribes started rising up to the point where all the laws, a lot of laws were changed. A lot of laws were changed because they needed to pacify Judah. The civil rights movement, they had to pacify Judah because when Judah rise up, this whole place can get tore down. So they pacify Judah because they're afraid that Judah may rise up one day. Read that part again. Judah is a lion's wealth. From the prey, my son, thou art going up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion. So you're ready to leap. You're couching as a lion, but you're being pacified. Read. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? And that's what the Lord is asking. That's what Jacob was telling his son. Who's going to rouse you up? Who's going to uh, who's going to make you stand up and take your true position in the earth? See, these other nations are watching Judah because Judah is the parameter of all the tribes. We'll pacify them. We'll give them laws and keep them quiet. We'll give them Barack Obama. We'll keep them quiet. Just be pacified and allow us to rule. Judah have the spirit of a king. But who's going to rouse them up? You know who's going to rouse them up? Christ. Christ. Read on. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. Until Shiloh come. Shiloh is Christ. Shiloh means peaceable one. Okay, read that part again. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. Because we know that Christ is coming to bring the law. Yes, Christ is from the tribe of Judah. And when he come back, He's going to be exactly like his people are. We know that, that these nations have put up Caesar Bourget to be Jesus Christ. Christ do not look like the Europeans that were put up in the New World. Okay? Christ is from the tribe of Judah. Okay? Read on. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. And unto Christ, the Lord and Savior, the sacrifice. That's where the gathering of the people should be through Judah. Read on. Binding his foal unto the vine, and his ass coat unto the choice vine, he washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. He washed his clothes in what? He washed his clothes in the, in the blood of grapes. In the blood of grapes. What does that mean? When Christ, the leader of Judah, the king of Judah, come back, he's coming back to get his garment dirty. Soiled. Not with dirt but with the blood of the nations that have lied and have deceived his people. Yes. Yes. We're going into Judah right now. So Jacob is giving his son a prophecy that, listen, judgment is going to come from your tribe. Someone is going to come out of Judah that's going to straighten this whole earth out. And when he comes back, he's not coming back to give out flowers and, 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 to, and to invite you to a little party where you can skip through the tulips. No. Christ is coming back. He's going to soil you his garment with blood. With blood. Because of the evil that is being perpetrated here on his earth. And the lion this earth hath done on him. How do you know that? Go to Revelations 19 and 11. It's showing you the precept. This is not our personal opinion. Revelations 19 and 11. And Isaiah the 63rd chapter. And I need you to also get out of the Apocrypha. Yes, the same book the Catholic Church took out of the Bible. 2nd Ezra 6 and 9. Still breaking down Judah. Don't forget, Judah is a Negro tribe. So the same blood that's in the so-called Negro was in Jesus Christ. The same blood that was shed for the sins of his people. You got that? Revelations 19 and 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. So this is going to be a righteous war, not like a war you have with George Bush. Through righteousness he judge and make war. He's coming back for war, man. Don't think that they're not planning on fighting him. All your governments of the world, you're going to lose. You're going to come together. 
You out there with your man space stations, your eagle space stations, SARC-2 vertical traps, nuclear missiles. What you need missiles in space for? Getting the whole earth together to try to fight against the Lord and save it. He's coming back angry. And righteousness, he's going to judge and he's going to make war with this earth. Who is he going to make war with? See, the powers of this earth do not want to let this earth go. They know their time is running out, but they don't want to let it go. So they're going to fight for it. They're going to fight to keep this earth, even if it means fighting against our Lord and Savior. You would think that they, they must be out of their minds, right? They must be crazy. Then they'll tell you, listen, the Bible ain't real, the book is not real, what you doing up in space then? What are you putting weapons out in space for? You know it's real. You know the Lord is coming from the tribe of Judah. Judge and make war. Let's show you who he's going to make war with. Go to 2nd Ezra 6 and 9. Because we know what will befall Israel in the last days. But who's going to be ruling in the last days? 2nd Ezra 6 and 9. For Esau is the end of the world. So if you look at the end of the world, the people that are ruling this earth, ruling the economy, uh uh going into wars all over the earth, taking each country down. That's Esau. The pure seed in European power is Esau according to the Bible. The pure seed. Read that part again. Esau is what? For Esau is the end of the world. Esau is the end of the world. So Esau would be the people ruling at the very end. Read. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. And Jacob's rulership is going to come right after Esau fall. So that's the, that's this battle we're dealing with here. Esau know that this is it for him. When Christ come back, no more rulership for Esau. So he's going to fight. And Christ's blood, Christ's garment is going to be stained by the blood of those that fight against him. How do you know that? Go to Isaiah 63 and 1. So you'll know that this is not our opinion. Isaiah 63 and 1. Go ahead. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from, from Buzrah? Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments of Buzrah? Dyed means they was not originally one color, but once he got finished killing, it was dyed from white to red. Who is this that's coming from, from Bozra? Bozra was a capital city in Mount Seir where the Edomites were before they came down with Alexander the Greek and started conquering the whole earth. Okay? So it's Christ who's, who, who's going to go through Edom. Read. This that is glorious in his apparel. Who's glorious in his apparel? The king of Judah. Jesus Christ. Read. Traveling in the greatness of his strength, I that speak in righteousness might, might mighty to save. That's Shiloh. That's our Lord. Mighty to save. Our Savior, Yeshua. Three. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel? So the question is, Christ, if you came back with, with all white on, why are you red in your apparel? Three. And thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat. Christ, look like you just started, look like you've been crushing grapes, Christ. Where are you coming from? Read. I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me. He went through Esau, and he see that all those societies that was established in the earth was not with him. All the powers that have been established trying to claim Christ are not with him. So what will he do? Go ahead. For I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury. He will do what? For I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury. Are you reading about this Jesus Christ in your church? Now you might get upset with me by bringing it out, but that's in the Bible. You say read the Bible, right? Christ is coming back for war. The powers that are ruling this earth will not willingly give this earth up. Satan have connected with the powers of this earth because Satan do not want to give his power up in this earth. It's going to be an all-out war. And guess who's going to lose? Yes, you got it. 
the powers that have established their armies, that have established their armies here, they're going to lose. Christ will win. And he will set up Jacob again. Let's go back to Genesis. That's a whole other teaching in itself, but we had to go into it because in Genesis, it identifies what would happen with Judah. Now we're going to go to Benjamin. Benjamin. Let's go to Genesis 49 and 27. Who have we identified so far? Reuben. Okay? The Seminole, uh, the Seminole Indians of Florida and the Aborigines of Australia. We have identified Simeon and Levi, the Dominicans and the Haitians. We also have identified Judah, the so-called Negro. Now we're going in to Benjamin, Benjamin. Read. Benjamin show raven as a wolf. Raven of a wolf. You ever, you ever see a wolf howl at night? That breaks down Benjamin or the Jamaicans or West Indians and how they sing. How they raven as wolves. They communicate through their songs. And, and, and you notice that the Benjamites talks about the Lion of Judah. They sing and they rave about Israel and how they would come back again as a people. Read. Benjamin shall raven as a wolf in the morning. He shall devour the prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. He shall divide the spoil. Now, if you go into history, the Maroons, which were taken, which were taken down by the Europeans, the Maroons, which was an African tribe, which was Benjamin, end up taking down the ship, taking the gold and spoiling the ship, and turning the ship back. Yes. The Benjamites are known for their short temper. And they don't like to be forced into anything. So it was hard for the Europeans to take them down. Eventually they took them down, but I'll let you know, Benjamins, they're very tough. They're very strong-willed people. Go to Deuteronomy 33 and 12. Deuteronomy 33 and 12. Read. And of Benjamin he said, The beloved of the Lord shall dwell in safety by him, and the Lord shall cover him all the day long, and he shall dwell between his shoulders. To let you know that Benjamin is protected by the Most High. They're one of the tribes that still held on to a lot of their heritage. So out of all the tribes, you notice Benjamin is all, uh, normally they speak about Israel. Now they go all going into the Heli Selassie, that's where they go off at, saying that Queen Sheba had a child with Solomon, and that through Heli Selassie, we are Jews, or going into the Ethiopian or Falashian understanding. That's incorrect. When you go into 2 Kings 17, it lets you know that Hamites were put in the land instead of the children of Israel. That's how the Hamites got there. So the spirit and Benjamin is correct trying to hold to your heritage of Israel but you're going about it the wrong way you're going through Halei Selassie then you're using drugs like marijuana and all that to become spiritual you don't need that it's already in you you don't need marijuana and getting high to, to bring out your spirituality your father Jacob in the Bible told you what will befall you the tribes of the Maroon raving and as a wolf. You're spiritual people. So now you have to come back into the fullness of being who you are, opposed to still looking at Africa as your homeland. You didn't start in Africa. You started in Israel. You ran into Africa in 70 AD. See, once the kingdom was split, Judah was left. You had Judah, Benjamin, and Levi still there in the southern kingdom until the Romans on the Vespasian and Titus took you down and you ran into Africa in 70 AD. That's how you got taken into the West Indians. That's how the Haitians got taken into Haiti or Levi got taken into Haiti. And that's how you Negroes came over here to the Americas. How do you prove that? Go ahead and go to Deuteronomy 27 and 1. 